Hey, this is Jonathan Gillum. I'm about to start the show. And I just want to tell everybody, Facebook is sending out warnings that uh, starting October 1st, they're putting a new policy in place where they could just get rid of your uh, profile without any questions. So I want to make sure that you know about connectzing.com. It's one word, connectzing.com. And that is a new platform that was created by my good buddy Drago, who was a Navy SEAL. He was a Polish citizen before he came to America and was imprisoned for almost three years for being part of the Freedom Underground because, yes, they were a socialist country. He knows exactly what the importance of the First Amendment and freedom of speech is all about. So go check it out, connectzing.com, Z-I-N-G, connectzing.com, and let him know that I sent you, and let's start the show. Jonathan Gillum back on the Experts Podcast. The truth has arrived. So I've been in uh, Will County all week, um, since Friday actually, in Illinois. And as you know, we got to talk to uh, Nick Ficarello. Is it Ficarello? Did I say that right? These Italians. And uh, George Pearson. Uh, and uh, from the uh, Will County Republican Committee, I guess what it's called. It, you know, I go place to place, and it's committee, club, uh, program, whatever. So I brought what I brought. I got a few extra people to come on here, and uh, these are candidates uh, that are actually um, going to be running for some offices here. There's several here that couldn't make it today. We'll talk about some of them as well. But I wanted George to introduce everybody. So if you listened to yesterday's show, and I hope you did remarkable show it's the longest show i've done so far um i usually do, you know on the radio we do three hours but that's broken up by commercials yesterday george and i talked for three hours and probably could have kept going the day before that was nick uh another just e- extremely interesting and important uh life and what he's running for is uh the will county uh executive uh, but george go ahead and introduce who we have here today Sure. Thanks, JT, for inviting us back on again. Again, we have Nick Ficarillo, who is running for Will County Executive. We have James Passatini, who is running for Will County Coroner. And sitting to my left is Mrs. Miss Gretchen Fritz, who is running for Recorder of Deeds. Recorder of Deeds. So we're, we're going to get to that in just a minute because the Recorder of Deeds, there's a lot of different offices that people are running for but i have to say recorder of deeds people probably know the least about it um but it has the most um game of thrones uh, sounding <laughs> name i think of gretchen fritz fritz recorder of deeds and she opens up the book when you do something nice it's going to be gretchen that's recording it but that's not what it is no it's not thank you yeah i, I was saying before i'm i'm all about gravitas but yeah, the recorder of deeds actually keeps the, the permanent records of all of the properties, all of the, the deeds, both um, residential and commercial properties yeah. in, within the county. And it goes back to the 1800s, actually. Wow. So, and why, we were trying to figure this out, why, we, why it's so important. I mean, it seems like a lot of these political, especially the city level or the state level political offices, you could probably trace these back to where somebody was doing corruption up close like if or if if the federal government comes in or the state government comes in and they want to take a home or uh, somebody who is wealthy back in the 1800s decided they want to own that property that they could do something with the deed of that property yeah i'm not exactly sure of the origins of it but i know that um it's very common across the country in counties across the country that these are elected positions coroner uh recorder of deeds sheriff um these are right. these are very commonly um elected positions and but yeah it could be that there was someone who was appointed uh and then found to be corrupt and right. so they decided well let's let the hire let's let the people hire this person directly by their vote and so 
potentially, I, I don't know, but it's potentially possible that's how it became elected. And in Will County, so you will sit on, is it the board of directors or where, how do you, how does this work in this, in this no, county? No, essentially, we are, we will all be a, uh, department heads. If we, if we are victorious in November, we will be department heads of our, when we are victorious, right. uh, we'll be department heads of, of our own staff. So sort of silos almost, um, separate from the county board. The county board sets the budget. That's the primary control that they have over these offices. Mm -hmm. um, they set the budget, but then they don't micromanage um, from there. They, they let the, the elected official uh, control their own, their own staff, their own budget, their own office. That's very interesting. So is it, um, do you look at this position as, uh, what do you feel as though from a, a standpoint of importance of, from the Republican Party of having somebody in this position? Why, why is it important for the Republicans to be uh, in the position of, of the, um, what's, what's the title again, the, um, that you're the recorder, of recorder deeds. of deeds yeah the recorder of deeds why is that it's starting to say the doer of deeds that's a whole nother <laughs> that's george george drives around with the with a helmet with the with the eagle's uh uh uh, wings going off the side uh, like he's a uh, flash mercury mercury yeah <laughs> doing good deeds so why, why is um, why is this important for us why is it important for you well i think it's a good question for all of us to answer but i for me i think that um it's, it comes down to fiscal responsibility. You want, you want people uh, who are department heads, who do control budgets, you want them to act with fiscal responsibility. And integrity, I think, is the other, the other uh, at least for the one that, the person I'm challenging, I think integrity comes into question. Um, so those are, I think, the, probably the two main issues. Good, good. All right, let's, uh, we'll come back to you in just a minute. Let's, uh, the reason why, so I came up with this idea yesterday when I was talking to George, and after I talked to Nick, I was like, we got to get a group of people that are running for different offices. Last night when I went to, where was it that we went last night? Homer Glen Township. Homer, Homer Township Republican okay. meeting. So I was so blown away by those individuals that were there because so many people were running for something or they, they were like, yeah, I'll run for something. You know, let, let me know what you need. Uh, these are people who want to be involved. And uh, it was very inspiring because most of the places I go, people show up and they're like, who do I need to vote for? That's really what they're, that they, they show up, they give a donation, they want to know who to vote for and that's it. These were, these were people of action. And one of the things that dawned on me last night when I was sitting there is that several of the people were talking about running for school board. We had uh, Nick who's running for uh, county executive you're the the uh, recorder of deeds uh and uh and then we had a few other people there that were uh, one guy who was running for for congress and i kept thinking you know this is interesting because these are different levels of not importance they're all important but levels of like one's going to affect things immediately one's going to affect things over a long period and out of all the things that they have that people are running for school board is uh something that it, that's our future you know, if people can, if we can get the right people in school board, that's how we affect the future of the of the Republican Party. So, uh, with that, the other, the, so tell me uh, your name again. Jim Passantini. Jim Passantini, um, you're running for coroner. Yes. Which is a total anomaly <laughs> to me. I didn't know that somebody ran for coroner. You know, we always just think of coroner, where you know I have these horror stories from NYPD detectives telling me about when the coroner's office showed up to get a body and this and that. That's all we ever think about coroner, but I don't know if it's just in, in Illinois, but a coroner is the only person that can arrest a sheriff in Illinois. Yeah, I did find that out. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's a very powerful position because if you, we were talking about this the other day, Democrat and sheriff, I don't understand that at all. How you can have somebody in a, in a powerful sheriff's position that, uh, that is does this supports a group that does not believe in the second amendment how is that how is that possible but but anyway tell us a little bit about uh, uh about the um the corner spot well, how do you, why did you decide to run for that and what importance do you see there one i've been with the Cree township board for like almost 16 years now and being it's, it's been years ago when i started off as a police cadet on a police department for like three years then I went and got my degree in associates in 
criminal justice. And then finally, I kind of went to the other side. I went to the, the fire department side. But to me, the police and fire work together. I mean, I told the younger guys, you know, they have, you have to work with them. And just working with them as far as doing the photos, being a photographer, and on crime scenes and stuff like that, I like working hand in hand. And I've told the people so far, I'm going to make myself visible. I'm not going to just sit in the office or whatever. I will be out traveling if I have to. And I like the communication. I want to build a bigger and stronger communication between the police departments and the fire departments with the coroner's office. So the, the coroner will actually have that, um, that much of an influence and that much of a voice with between the, the, the police and the, uh, the fire department? I'm going to try to build a good core with them that if they have any questions i'll have an open door policy that call me come in you know said you know to arrange a meeting with me and do we'll they, go from there do they report to you or do you or are you just integral in what they do it more integral yeah. you know with what they do but i want to build you know stronger than what they have right. and after talking with the sheriffs a week ago i got a good very very good uh reply from them as far as what i want to do it sounds like that's what they want people to you know want me to do right and that's what i'm gonna do now what else does the coroner do uh besides you know i see how you're wanting to build this you're an integral part of what they do whether it be fire or police um and you're you're on a level that i don't think most people realize that the coroner's on uh what else does is the coroner's job like who do you manage and what exactly do you do it's more of an administrative position mm -hmm. But I'm going to do that plus, you know, with the staff of the deputy coroners, investigators that are on the staff and work hand in hand with them. Mm -hmm. And if I have to, I'll go out and work with them, right. you know, you know, not supervise them. But, you know, if there's anything else I can do to help them out. See, the reason I like what you had to say so much is because so many people get themselves in a position where they have experts in their fields that are working, that are part of the coroner's office. Um, I'm just using coroner as, as an example. This happens all the time everywhere. And Democrats are the worst about this. They get in a position and then they do what they want or what the party line says, not what is best for the community not what's best for that office you, i haven't heard that come out of your mouth yet where you're where if this was democrats we'd be hearing you know there's people under me they're going to do this they're going to do this and it and it follows when they say that right along the party line what i've heard and what i hear all of you saying is not a party line you're talking about this is my office this is what i'm running for and these are the changes that need to happen for the for the best possible outcome for the people yes I, I agree with her. That's what I, and working in the fire service and dealing with the deputy coroners coming out, I see what they have to deal with. And this way, if it's, you know, where I don't have to travel far in my car and I'm not doing anything, I'm going to get in my car and go. It's not to supervise them, but to show your face to the fire departments, police departments, the people. Mm -hmm. So when I get elected, they're going to come back and say, hey, we saw his name and face, you know, when we were running for the office and he's here. Right. I mean, you build that rapport with the people. Yeah. And I think listening to you all and we're going to talk to we'll talk to uh, Nick yet uh, uh, next, who we interviewed on Monday's show about uh, the reality of what the county executive is all about. But what's interesting now is we sit here. You know, with somebody that is going to be, and I'm going to predict that you're going to be the, the corner, somebody who's going to be the, the doer, not the doer of deeds, but the recorder of deeds, and then a county executive, how all these people, these individuals will be working in their positions uh, to better the entire, the entire community, uh, not along a party line, but along a line of conservatism. If it's not broken, you're not going to fix it. If it doesn't need to be changed, you're not going to change it. And that's that really, when you look at that party line, which is really the conservative party line, not we need to um, we need to have a revolution, not that we need to uh, look at the, change these things because of inequality, which is not actually there. All these things that they make up for power, they're they're splitting the people up. They're doing these things to, to gain power. When I hear Republicans, especially on the local level, talk about 
what they're trying to do. They're they're the one cohesive thing that brings them together is uh, not subversive talk. It is slow to change, effective results. Don't fix it if it's not broken. And and when you get a group of people in different positions, that's pretty phenomenal. So Nick, uh, again, just just to re, uh, refresh everybody about yourself, you're former law enforcement. You've been a chief of police. Now you're running for uh, the the um, Will County Executive. And where will you fall in line with all of this? Well, the Will County Executive handles offices in county government that don't have an elected official uh, directly over them. Mm -hmm. So offices such as the Will County Highway Department, also known as the Will County Department of Transportation, Will County Animal Control, uh, land use, um, wide variety, uh, IT, the entire IT department that uh, the county uses, the mainframe and all the IT personnel, the uh, mapping of all homes and uh, photographic and mapping of every home in Will County. Uh, zoning will all fall underneath the office of the executive even there's even a uh, veterans outreach uh, service uh, that the executive has and also a, a job uh, uh, outreach service that the executive's office uh, also handles so all the offices in county government that are not elected uh, that don't have an elected official that's in charge of them, the office of the executive handles. The executive also sets the agenda for the Will County Board, runs the Will County Board meetings, and has a tie-breaking vote along with a veto power on any resolution that uh, is enacted by the, by the uh, legislative uh, Will County Board. So I hope the listeners are seeing that how integral these different things are, because there's a lot going on in any of these positions. If you put somebody in there that wants to cause trouble, they're going to be able to manipulate their part of the pie and things are going to they're going to change. I mean, these are some pretty powerful positions when you think when you think about it. I mean, corner is, is a whole new thing in my brain about how important that is. Um, obviously. You know, uh, a county executive is somebody who's going to be able to manipulate things if they if they have a subversive uh, mindset. And then the recorder of deeds. You know, I keep thinking and reflecting back. I, I watched this show Turn, uh, that is about the American Revolution. Imagine back in those days. You know, if um, if the government, which was the British, uh, were still uh, in power at that point in time, if they wanted to. Um, Put somebody in or quarter somebody or if they wanted to flip and and pull a politician over to their side they could do things with deeds and homes and uh and push people right out of their homes i, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's part of what you ha will have to do with but we see how important these things are uh when you that most people when they vote they're only looking for the stuff that the news talks about that's all they're they're really voting on and these things are so much more important now that I'm seeing, uh, now that I'm down on the local level and meeting with all these people. Uh, go ahead, Gretchen. Oh, I was just going to say, there's these positions come with a lot of hiring power. Is really is really mm -hmm. where a lot of the and that's kind of what you're talking about is if if they want to uh, if they want to practice nepotism, they can do that. Mm -hmm. If they want to hire people who are friends who are not qualified to do the jobs, the jobs will not get done the way they should get done. And those people will stay there. All. Those people will stay there. Potentially, yes. Potentially, those those people could be very difficult to get rid of mm -hmm. in in the future. So that's really what we're what we're talking about. And you know, especially um, Nick as the county executive, the county executive has a ton of hiring power, um, and he could he could say better than I can how many hundreds of positions positions, the executive um, has the ability to hire, uh, but it's it's really a lot. My department is only 22, mm -hmm. so much much smaller, but still very important to servicing the people of Will County, as you mentioned. Um, and uh, and Jim would have to tell you how many people are on his staff, but that that's really a lot of where integrity, uh, fiscal responsibility. That's that's the main influence that they have is in hiring. So I want to introduce you. Anything else you want to say? I was just going to say that you brought up the uh, revolutionary the TV program Turn. 
Yeah. And that uh, you brought up uh, basically what you were saying was quartering of British troops right. in American homes. Which is where the Third Amendment comes from. And people need to realize that our first ten amendments, the Bill of Rights, are based on the improprieties and the uh, terrible treatment that the British did to the colonists, uh, the, the terrible treatment of, of Americans here on this soil by the British are the main reason for the Ten Commandments, right to defend themselves, right to have freedom of speech, and the Fifth Amendment, uh, not to quarter, not to quarter anybody. And, and I, I believe that uh, I, Ben Beerley just walked in, but I'll, I'll uh, Jonathan, I'll let you introduce him. Well, Ben is, uh, he's running for uh, state senate in Illinois, the 40, 43rd district, right? Right. Which used to be my favorite number until they gave it to Bubba Wallace um, <laughs> in NASCAR. And then Black Lives Matter stole that. Oh, so ouch. So they're, they're trying to kill police officers, and they stole 43 from Richard Petty gave in to him. It's terrible. But uh, so 43rd District, um, it's Ben Beerley, right? Correct. Okay. And you're a, uh, a major in uh, United States Marine Corps retired, Naval Academy grad. So, you know, this is one thing I don't think most voters – uh, really, most voters are uneducated in, in anything except for president, really, these days. Um, but what that's is a fair statement? Yeah, yeah that, that's true. They really don't understand all the other things that really impact their lives, right. all these different offices, like you've been talking about. And state uh, representatives are really, I think, when you look at. Um, you look at state representative versus a somebody who goes to a federal representative of, of Congress. People always look to the state representative, or excuse me, to the federal representatives as being more powerful or people who are going to do things for them. That's the mindset that they have. But the reality is a state representative can affect much more on your local level than, than a federal representative will. Absolutely, that's true. Uh, you know, state and local government has much more direct impact in your lives than the federal government ever will. You know, obviously there's some big blue arrow stuff that happens at the federal level, but who the president is has much less impact than who your state rep is, you know, whether it be the rep or the senator, like I'm running for the Senate, or who the, you know, your county executive is, because those are the people really, they're going to pass legislation that impact how much you pay in taxes, uh, you know, at the state and local level in all the all the different little regulations and stuff that really impact in your life from day to day. And how do they uh, when you, so you're going to run for state rep and you're going to win uh, for uh, state uh, representative in the 43rd district of Illinois. How do you as a state rep um, in your district work with these locals like you get somebody who is uh, Will County uh, executive or the coroner or the recorder of deeds how do you uh, work with them do you mean do, and have you seen in other cases where somebody becomes a state rep and they really don't have an association with the with the local people um, do you play I mean is this something that's important to you to stay connected with those people we're right and and this is one thing uh, that a lot of people are calling for term limits because of the fact that you know uh, state reps haven't stayed accountable to the people mm -hmm. uh so there is a large cry for that reason for for term limits because the state reps do end up being um uh, disconnected from the people who elect them and they become if you will too powerful and they overpower the local government so uh people across the board who i talk to whether the, from hard democrat to hard republican across the board uh who uh, said they're going to vote for me is partially because of that they want to see the state representatives work with your county executive your you know recorder of deed the coroner to implement policy that will make sense and will not impact their lives on the day-to-day -day basis in a negative fashion like we see now right right have you and have you held political office before uh just minor uh precinct committeemen and what, so when you look at it, um, well, well, let me ask you this. What, what, what pushed you to this particular office? Okay, well, I have a, a very extensive background uh, in uh, federal government. First of all, as a Marine with 
Um, one of my primary responsibilities was budget planning and execution. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Illinois in our state of our, um, our economy and our fiscal policy is just a wreck. And so I look at that and I realize that my expertise falls in line with fixing the problems that we see with, with the taxation problems and especially the unaccountable spending that we see uh, between that and my degrees. I, currently, I teach political science at two colleges here in the local area. How crazy is it, though, you know, you're looking at this budget from a political standpoint, and had right. you been in the Marine Corps and ran your budget like this, you'd probably be in Leavenworth. <laughs> I say that quite frankly because that's the truth. Had yeah. I had I done what they did down there at Springfield, yes, I would be in Leavenworth because we have something called the Anti Deficiency Act, which requires that anybody who can obligate the government must have funds available to obligate the government against. If you don't have funds, you cannot. And so currently there's approximately $7 billion worth of over obligated funds. That's funds where we have authorized services and products to be delivered to the government and there's no money to pay them. Wow, that's so that would, that would that's like a layaway. <laughs> yeah, exactly, except we're doing it at other people's expense, right. and that is unconscionable. And those are probably goods and services that, that we need. Sure, sure. And the, there's, the problem is that, that we have, I believe it's $56 million a year worth of um, waste in our government just from corruption alone. That doesn't even account for money that is poorly spent. That's just corruption. Right, that is crazy. That's an amazing amount. I mean, you don't see, that's what people don't think. They don't see that the obligated money, I like that word, you know, they don't think about the fact that you need stuff. People just automatically assume that the government's gonna get what we need that they're gonna right. take care of it. They don't realize that uh, the government not only has to uh, raise money, but it has to budget that money, and it's not a surplus like everybody thinks. Oh no, no, not at all. In fact, uh, our state of affairs right now is so bad that we're about to go bankrupt. In fact, I, I would argue we're already there. Now people would say, well, the states are not, are not allowed to go bankrupt. Well, that's true, however, when you can't pay your bills, what do we call that? Bankruptcy. We're there now. So we need to get people who are going to be responsible, unlike my opponent who's been there for three years and has continued to pass budgets for which we are not having revenue. Right. Um, when, when it comes to corner, um, do they, uh, have you looked into the budget here? I mean, how, how is a corner budget? Is that something that can be overspent like this and, and, or is it not as big of a budget? I think it can be to a point there's 18 people that are on staff. So I'm going to take a look at that and see as far as the money that's going out, if I can cut it or keep it where it's at, you know, I'm going to try to really budget what I can right and for what the amount of people that I have it, it's interesting the bureau when I worked for the FBI when I was an agent when they get a new uh, way of doing things they don't get rid of the old way of doing things and I noticed that in government a lot they you know they come up That's with a new typical. a new technology instead of getting rid of the electronic communication which was basically a piece of paper that we would send electronically they keep that and we do emails it's a, and so now you're doubling the amount of stuff that you're doing well, th that's true, and if I may comment on that, we see that a lot where government entities don't necessarily want to give up the power that they have. Mm -hmm. It's their whole reason for being, and so uh, if we come up with a new need, we don't reorganize the budget, we try to find new money to add to them, and government continues to grow as a result because nobody puts their foot down and says, no, we need to stay within the lines mm -hmm. here and what the people can afford. That's why Illinois currently has the highest tax burden in the nation. People are leaving in droves from the state, those who can afford to, or those who just quit and leave everything behind are leaving the state because the tax burden on the people is so high because we 
seem to have lost the ability to say no. You know, uh, I want to ask you real quick because you're um, you're big. Well, you're all big Second Amendment proponents. You know, there's no yes. doubt about that. Um, but what's interesting about what you just said, though, is that it's mostly Democrats that are leaving. They, they, they go somewhere, they ruin it, and then they leave and go somewhere else and then ruin that place. I've noticed that about the cities. They're leaving the cities and they're coming into the rural areas and they're ruining the rural areas by voting in the wrong people there. Um, th this probably has little to do with your position uh, as the uh, recorder of deeds, but speaking about the Second Amendment, I wanted to get everybody's opinion about the, the Second Amendment and how important it is and, and how, well, this is two different questions. Did you see what was coming down the line with the, with the leftists in this country and how quickly it's come? And how important is the Second Amendment now versus, you know, a, a year ago? It's always been important. But it's taken on a whole nother level now because we're in an armed conflict now. Absolutely. Um, no, I think the the way that this has escalated um, really has shocked me. I, I don't know about anybody else, but I find it shocking. Um, I knew that things were not good during the Obama administration. I think that he probably did more to divide people than, than uh, people either realize or will admit. Uh, but yes, the the last the the events of the last nine months or so have have been pretty pretty shocking, and uh, but to me, for me personally, the the Second Amendment has always been super important to me ever since I've really been aware of it, which would be which probably was like the late '90s, I would say, is when I got involved with uh, police work and and shooting and guns and and all of that sort of thing, and um, you know. I'm a five foot two woman, so you know for me. But you are the recorder of deeds. The well, recorder, you will be the recorder of be. deeds. Uh, but but for <laughs> me, it, it it truly is, and for all women, it truly is the equalizer that we need. It it is what makes us equal to men. Right. And um, actually, the ironic thing is, it became even more important to me when I got a radio show, right. and I got a death threat at the radio station. Uh, well, when you do a live radio show, it's pretty easy for people to figure out when you yeah, come and you when are, you're going to yeah. leave, you know. And so, and it's not that difficult to figure out where the radio station right. is. So, uh, at that point, concealed carry became very important to me, and and I became very dedicated to it. And uh, you know, oftentimes events will happen whenever I start to slack off on on carrying concealed. Events will happen to remind me, no, it's in your backyard. Mm -hmm. it, this can happen to anyone at any time, and you need to have a gun on you all the time because you, no one knows the day or the hour. Right. Yeah, and now, uh, Nick, uh, when, when we look at what's going on in these cities, um, one, there's a couple things that are coming to mind when I watch this stuff. One, the left is very, very, they're very organized. They have meetings with, uh, very often they have people that are teaching them these tactics and then they're employing them and getting better. It, it's, it's really a, it's guerrilla warfare, um, but using frozen water bottles instead of AK-47s, which that's changing now. We can see that they're showing up with guns um, and, and in the case of Portland, they're willing to use those guns and skateboards. They're using skateboards a lot uh, to, to crack people across the heads and, and lasers to cause real damage. When you see um, what's happening, uh, and most people don't see the rural areas. You've been a law enforcement officer in the rural areas. Uh, how easy would it be for them to transition into the rural areas? The subdivision areas would be targeted more so than a farm or a single farm or, or uh, grouping of farms. A subdivision area in the rural areas would be targeted because of the fact that it's a grouping of more people than say a farm obviously you're going to get more bang for your buck in a sub subdivision area if the area is unincorporated the sheriff's department would respond and the sheriff's department uh, unfortunately doesn't have the same response time all the time that the uh, municipal departments have working both in a sheriff's department and also chief of police of a municipal department the odds are that the municipal department has a quicker response time. Now, there are some areas that the sheriff's department handles that have a, a very high response time, very good response time. Uh, areas that are more populated, such as Joliet Township, Palmer Glen, uh, certain areas of Frankfort Township, 
Uh, certain areas of uh, Lockport Township have a very high response time, but areas uh, out in uh, rural uh, eastern Will County would have a little higher response time, uh, which would be easily targeted. The uh, terrorists could come in, the domestic terrorists, because we all know that's what they are, could come in, uh, do the thing and be gone before there's an adequate amount of police uh, to cover that location. It'd also be, I think, much easier for them to occupy a place like that uh, because it would take a lot longer to get the forces there to stand against an occupied force. Um, Unfortunately, uh, people are not, they're not aware of this. They're not forward thinking this type of stuff. Most people aren't aware that uh, they don't know the art of survival or a survival assessment, which your book uh, is opening up my eyes and also my wife's eyes. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Thank you for the plug. <laughs> let me, so let me ask, um, let me, I, I just forgot your name. I need to, should have written these names. Jim. Yeah, Jim. Let me ask uh, Jim one more time. Uh, who's running for corner. The same thing. When you, when you look at, um, the position that you're in and the people that you're going to be working around, how important is it? And is it something that you're focused on making sure that they understand the reality of what's going on? Oh yeah. I will make it definitely, you know, to their, that of what's going on, you have to deal, you know, have open eyes on everything when you're out and, you know, if they have to, you know, carry, you know, we'll get the concealed carry for them just for safety Mm -hmm. that's the whole thing yeah and also the the organization between law enforcement and uh, the fire department is going to be uh very big here's my worry about this though is that um and and i'm going to ask uh ask uh, brian uh, or ben about this ben ben beerley who's running for state uh uh, oh you're running for state senate i was saying represented but you're running for state senate right right for state senate in the 43rd district um when we look at uh, how the the people are now in a position where they may have to respond and defend themselves. And the problem is that law enforcement has been, uh, well, there's a couple problems here. They, some of them don't want to act because they're law afraid. Law enforcement is shackled. Well, yes, but they're also full of people through years and years of bad recruiting that they have people who are just not going to do the job. They don't want to get in trouble. They're not going to do it. We add that to the fact that they've been shackled, uh, the fact that media will immediately um, uh, vilify them, and that the governments, the state governments and local governments, are are literally not allowing them to do their job. People are going to have to start stepping up to defend themselves, like the McCluskeys. You know, how can can, uh, Republicans in state levels uh, stand together in your opinion, to back those people up. Because ultimately, when this happens, it's already, you guys are gonna have to be coordinated. It's not gonna be something that where you can say, well, I think we should back those people. It's gonna be coordinated because if it, if it does get any worse, you're gonna see more of the McCluskeys. You're gonna see more of like the kid up in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, who was there you know, trying to help people as a, as a medic and then ended up getting attacked by these people and defended himself. You're gonna see more of that. Yeah, he, he actually, uh, Kyle, I think was his yeah. first name, was helping people on both the left and the right uh, and ended up being attacked and defended himself. So he's going to have to face that in court. Um, let me back up a little bit. And, you know, since I teach political science, I, I can't not do this, is when we look at what's happening, I, I saw it coming because if you look at the organizations on the far left, okay, the political philosophies, you, you're talking about the socialists, the fascists, yes, they're on the far left, and the communists, right. they all use violence in politics mm-hmm. as part of their their overall plan, their strategy. And they'll push it as far as we allow them. And that's kind of, you know, look at, you know, Germany with the Kristallnacht and other countries like that. Uh, There are tests that they do to see what the country will allow. And for us, that was the riots in the cities. Mm -hmm. And we allowed that. And so they started coming toward the suburbs and we allowed that. And they step up the violence and we allow and, that. Exactly. And until we say enough is enough, and I mean we the people mm-hmm. say enough is enough, violence is not the way we conduct 
political business here in the United States. Until we do that, we will continue to see an escalation of the violence as a means to accomplish their political ends. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely important that we understand that and that we organize to stop the violence. And if that means, I hate to say it, you know, if that means that we have to, you know, deputize people and train them. That my, that was coming in my, that was in my mind right there. Of, yeah. of w When will somebody forward think enough to deputize the citizens of a, of a, of a town? Yeah, it, that's a good question. And, and that is, I think, where the state, and I know our governor will never do that, mm -hmm. but where the state and the local governments need to work together to provide, if you will, a coordinated response mm -hmm. to these levels of violence to put them down immediately. Right, right. Uh, real quick, um, since you do teach political science, I, when I look at fascism, when I look at communism, socialism, you know, especially after talking to several people I know uh, that were uh, raised in socialist countries versus communist countries, um, people that were put in jail for being, you know, part of Freedom Fighters, which I talked about at the beginning sure. of the show with my, my good buddy Drago. Um, there really is the ultimate end of all these is always the same. It's always controlled by the few of the many. Yes. Always. And but explain to everybody a little bit about how that those differences you know like the antifa is saying they're anti-fascist but the reality is they're more fascist than <laughs> than anybody that they're going against okay you have to get away from the rhetoric that you hear out there and look at the actions the actions always speak louder than words mm -hmm. those who use violence to accomplish their means and that especially is antifa and uh, regardless of what they say, you, you're absolutely right. What did fascists do in Germany and in Italy and in uh, Spain? They used a small group of individuals to, uh, to terrorize the people into compliance. And that's what we see, what Antifa is trying to do. They're not fighting, if you will, fascists because well they are the fascists right right but based on what they do okay yeah. the use of violence really defines them toward their political aim and what do they want ultimately that's really where we see difference between socialists fascists and communists is fascists want um a state that's dominated by the you know dominated by the government that is still allows for some individual ownership that is as long as it's centrally controlled there mm -hmm. can be some ownership of property socialists are a little step down from that communists are full socialists and want no private ownership whatsoever See, i like the way you say full socialist because that's the reality is yeah, socialists yeah. and communists are the same thing that's why i stopped calling them socialists because the reality is they're they're it's just full socialism right well it's what you see like what happened with uh, venezuela is they they push what they call Fabian socialism, which is essentially, it's socialism by law. And ultimately it fails because it can't, it can't stand up to its own promises. So instead of turning back, what happens then is they double down and start with the violence and the killing and uh, everything else that we see toward full socialism, better known as communism. Right. Now, I want to, um, well, I'm, we're going to close here in just a minute. I'm going to give you each uh, a few minutes just to talk about what's important for you. You know, if you want to give any more about your background and uh, why you're, you know, in this position, what, what motivated you to do this fight, then we'll go right here. We'll start with you, Gretchen. Go ahead. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, and don't forget to mention what you're running for and how yes. people can contact you. Thank you. Um, Gretchen Fritz. I'm running for Will County Recorder of Deeds. I am challenging a three-term incumbent. Um, that's probably um, the most important reason yeah. to, to do this. I think that um, I think that's 
more than long enough for anyone to hold hold that job and uh, I think that I'm better qualified on day one than, than she is after almost 12 years. So uh, I have a master's of library and information science and um, that teaches um, you know, information hierarchy, architecture, um, information retrieval, um, you know, all those sorts of things that, um, that are needed when you're running a large database of very critical information. Uh, so that's, that's my education is in that field in records management. And uh, I, I think, like I said, I think it's just super important that we have fiscal responsibility, that we, um, that we continually analyze how to shrink our budgets rather than grow our budgets. We want to shrink government. We don't want to grow government. And, um, and that's, that's what we stand for. That's what I stand for. I think all of us stand for. And, uh, so I do have a Facebook page, uh, Gretchen Fritz for Will County Recorder of Deeds. I, I'm on Parlor. I'm on Twitter. Um, You're going to be on ConnectZing now. I want you to join ConnectZing. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm, I'll do that this week. Um, I uh, On Twitter, I'm InfoHunterGFry. Um, I <laughs> had a hard time finding a Twitter handle. And... Uh, I'm, I'm on Instagram, so people can find me from that. And my website, I have an excellent website um, put together by a good friend of mine, and it's willcountyneedsanewrecorder.com. Wow, that's great. Okay, that's, there you go. All right, Nick, go ahead. Nick Ficarello running for Will County Executive. I'm a lifelong NRA member, Illinois State Rifle Association member, and also a member of Gun Saves Lives. Uh, been in law enforcement since 1978, uh, law enforcement administrator, deputy chief at Will County Sheriff's Police, and also chief of police at Braidwood. Uh, my challenge is I'm challenging the whole Democratic Party. The Democratic Party has virtually taken every major office in Will County, and we've seen our taxes go up. So I'm challenging the entire Democratic Party, and I want Republicans, including myself, to restore the balance of government in Will County, so that we stop this uh, stop and spend policy or tax and spend policy. The insanity somewhere has to stop as far as all this taxation. Uh, as was stated earlier by uh, retired Major Ben Beerley, that uh, Illinois is the highest or the second highest, while the two. Uh, taxed rates in the entire country and you were you were telling me also that is a 36 cent gas tax 39 cent 39 cent, that's crazy plus four cents uh additional Whew. that was just uh just happened this year wow <clears throat> so uh there is one pledge i'm going to make to every voter in will county and that i will veto as your will county executive any resolution any any enactment by the Will County Board to defund the police. We are not going to defund the Will County Sheriff's Police, and I'll be an advocate to stop any defunding of any other municipal and local police agency in Will County. Thank you. All right, go ahead, Ben. Okay, I'm Ben Beerley, Major United States Marine Corps, retired, running for Illinois Senate 43rd District. I'm running because of my experience in the Marine Corps dealing with budget planning and execution and uh, my education and in, in now profession in the political science, seeing the train wreck down there in Springfield. And, uh, and I got to the point where I decided enough is enough. We need to absolutely uh, put an end to the corruption to the uh, to the taxes, the spending, and uh, we need to get back to we the people, responsible government, and that message, by the way, is resonating across the board, from hard Democrat to hard Republican. They want to see reduced taxes. They want to see reduced spending. Uh, they want to see an end to the corruption and. Uh, they are excited that I am absolutely for term limits. I'm a combat veteran. I have three tours, uh, in, two in Afghanistan, uh, one in Iraq. Uh, I understand what it means to be a servant of the people, and I'm looking to continue that to serve the people, 
not be there for myself like the current politicians are, not to be uh, another yes man for Madigan who uh, will be nothing more than a rubber stamp, but to actually be there to serve and to work, by the way, with the opposing party when it, when it serves the people, uh, but to actually be there for the people. My, the best way to get a hold of me is uh, my website, which is ben4illinois.com. That's ben, the number four, illinois.com. Okay. Did you give your uh, your info? I'm, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll add it in there in a minute. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so thank you again. Uh, Electricrello.com is my website, and I'm also uh, just Google uh, Facebook and Electricrello, and you'll come up with my Facebook site. Picarello. Okay. Go ahead, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Jim Passantine. I'm running for Will County Corner. There's a few things I forgot to say earlier as far as education. I have been, my opponent states, stated that in the primary, she was the only medical professional, okay? In the fire service, I've been an EMT. My term or my license expires and it'll put me at 36 years straight. I know I'll have enough hours to certify again. Plus a lot of people didn't know I've been a certified pharmacy technician for 40 years. So I have background in medical handling and on the drug side too, but I want to build a better communication, like I said earlier, with the police departments, the fire departments and that. And I had stated with my employees that I have, I have an open door policy. So between them and the people, anything's, you know, if you want to talk to me, give me a call. I will have a Facebook page coming up soon. I am on Twitter. So you can get a hold of me through Twitter or, like I said, the Facebook page probably in the next couple of days will be on. It's interesting. You know, the experience level that's up here of all of you uh, is this is what inspires me to go and do these things and go around the country is to support this, to support this experience. I, one thing I love about Will County and that you all have done is, is and we were talking about this uh, yesterday, it's, it's the new Republican Party. More diversity because you guys are a very diverse group. Uh, there is uh, more experience and you're more conservative, which is the total opposite of what I'm seeing in, so, in other places. Experience, throw it out the door. There's 27 year olds that are winning primaries that have no experience whatsoever. Uh, whether or not some, a lot of these people are conservative is, is even questionable. And uh, when it comes to diversity, it, they're not diverse at all. And they're not reflective of, of their community. You guys are truly reflective of your community. And, and, and it's, uh, that's an incredible thing that I'm seeing here. You guys are really a model for what I've seen the rest of the people around the country should be following. And how do they, Jim, how do they get a hold of you for, uh, for your- I'll you have for? a Facebook page coming up probably toward the end of the week. Yeah. And I am on Twitter. What, and what's your handle on Twitter? Oh, God. It's, I think it's Jim for corner, uh, dot com. Or, look, look it up yeah. and then we'll, 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 we'll put it up there. <laughs> yeah. And I was in the fire service for 43 years. Right. Part time. So I got the, the experience level here is unbelievable for what, what you guys have done. So anybody else want to any, have anything else to say? Anybody? So say, uh, hold on one second here. Go ahead. I just want to say thank you, Jonathan, for coming into Will County and giving us this opportunity to be on your podcast. And yeah. thank you for all the support that uh, you've given all the candidates uh, during your stay here, you're, uh, you came as a guest and you'll be welcome back as a friend. Well, all of you, thank you very much. And, and uh, you guys, make sure that you put this on your, uh, we'll put the podcast up. You can put it on your your own website, on your Facebook. Uh, you can put the link on Twitter. And that way, the people that, uh, your, your voters can hear you. That's what's important about doing this. Yeah, I'd just like to say one more thing. Sure. This is Ben again. Um, for all of us who are running, understand that the biggest hurdle that we have to overcome is uh, our supporters getting off of their couch and supporting what they believe ought to be. So yeah. volunteering, uh, giving to campaigns, especially, your your time and treasure will make a difference in the outcome 
of the elections and what your society is going to look like. I keep saying that everywhere I go. I said it on Friday. I said it at your thing on uh, on Sunday or Saturday when it was. And, you know, people need to realize that that action has to happen. I, I was telling people when they had that um, build the wall fund and everybody was sending in $70 or $100, I'm like, listen, you gotta stop that. They're not gonna build a wall with that money. They're gonna raise that money. It's gonna be used for something else because you're not, you're not, you're, you're, you're being told, you sit there, we'll fix it. And that's not the case. Even if all of you were elected, if the people aren't involved, we're gonna be in the same position that we've always been in. And what happened with that wall? Nothing got built and now several people are under arrest and they're charged with all kinds of stuff. Uh, up to the tune of $20 million. So uh, stop thinking that one, there's a secret plan out there to save the country. There's no secret that the, the plan was made over 240 years ago by a, a group of gentlemen in uh, and around this country that were fleeing tyranny. And that plan was for you, the people, we, the people to step forward, be the government. That's the other thing. We are the government. People forget that they always they always say the government. Well, if you ran for office, you'd be part of the government. And if we don't start doing that and taking it back, uh, these lifelong career politicians uh, who are separate from us, uh, they they are uh, manipulating this and and monopolizing it. And the establishment, which is the other thing I like about this group, is that you are. I go around all over the country. I meet Republicans. I meet conservatives. I've even met some uh, liberals who don't see eye to eye with the Democrat Party. You all represent the communication for all these people and the and the thinking of experience through experience and uh, looking for real solutions. Uh, establishment is not like that. We we need to get away from the establishment. And I used to I've always said this. I, I'm not a fan of the two party political system because the reality is that it's private entities that are that are owning every seat of government, but it's what we have, it's not going away, and the only way to save this country is if the people take the Republican Party, move the establishment out of the way, and drive forward with what the founding fathers wanted. You know, Listen, God bless every single one of you. Um, I will, I'm gonna put this up, and this is gonna be Thursday's show, because today is Tuesday. Um, no, this is going to be when this is this is going to be tomorrow's show. So it'll be Wednesday's show, and uh, make sure that you pump it out. I'll pump it out. I'll put uh, the information for people to contact you, and then keep doing what you're doing because it's this. You guys are setting the example for around the country. You got it. So let me uh, just close this out here. So there you go, folks. Uh, one last show, and in Will County, uh, Illinois. And as you can see, as I was just saying there that you, we need to get away from the establishment thinking. The Republican Party needs to make a change. It needs to become the new Republican Party. But what, I'm not talking about progressing. I'm talking about the revolution where we go back to what we were. We need to become more diversified. We need to become the party of experience and a true conservative party. Stop with the compromise. Compromise is over. Time for compromise is gone. Now is the time for the American people to stand together. And listen, this is it. The only place you can do that is the Republican Party. That's it. That's the truth. I'm Jonathan Gillum. This is the experts. The truth has arrived. Peace and we're out of here.